morning, councillors, CEO, directors, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, statutory meeting of the 2024-2028 uh, Mackay Regional Council. Welcome to our online viewers. I'll start by acknowledging the fact that this uh, wonderful place we call home has seen a human occupation dating back over 60,000 years. And as a council and as a community, let's pay our respects to the traditional custodians and honour their elders past, present and those emerging. Welcome to the public gallery. This is a statutory meeting, so there's no public participation today, but we draw your attention to the, uh, the top right hand corner of, uh, of our display. All right. I declare the meeting open. And welcome Pastor Pat. Pastor, it's nice to have you here. Would you lead us and this term of council <coughs> in prayer, please? Thank you. Welcome to you. Mayor and councillors, directors, and uh, it's a privilege and an honour uh, to stand before you. This is my second time uh, being the third year of the council, and congratulations on your appointment as well as uh, leaders of our community here at Mackay. Um, I represent the MCT, which is Mackay Churches Together, but I'm uh, the church pastor for the Saint Day Adventist Church here at I have a word. I've been uh, contemplating on what to share upon. The last time I was here, I shared upon the love of God uh, to each and every one of us. And that love has to be a very, very factor in every decision and things that we do. I just want to acknowledge my sister, uh, Nathaniel. Congratulations on your appointment. She's a uh, member of our church. And we are so glad that, uh, that we have a church member in uh, our, our council here. And um, so I will draw a word from us from the book of Matthew chapter 11 uh, in the Christian Bible. Matthew chapter 11 verses 1, 2 and 3. And you might notice uh, some of the things in this passage that... Um, where he's writing from, uh, what's happening to this uh, individual. But I'll read. When Jesus had finished giving these instructions to his 12 disciples, he went out to teach and preach in towns throughout the region. John the Baptist, who was in prison, now this is the key character for uh, my share this morning, and he's been held in prison. John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things that Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus. Now he's been sitting in the, the jail and he sent some messengers uh, to ask Jesus. Now if I were in the jail, I would definitely ask questions. Uh, I'm not too sure about you, but if I were in that position, I would definitely send my messages and say, Hey, Jesus, can you help bail me out of jail? <laughs> can, you, can you come get me out of here? All right, that's, that's what I'll, I'll be asking. But instead, John, the Baptist, sitting in jail, sent some messages to Jesus with this question. Can you go and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been waiting for? Are you the Messiah we've been expecting? Or should we wait for someone else? Fascinating question. Now we all ask profound questions in this room. You will ask profound questions for our community. And uh, so often my favorite question, I ask every day at home to my wife, what are we eating? <laughs> what are we eating tonight? What are we having for, 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 for dinner? Why don't we have him for breakfast and, and whatnot? So, but John the Baptist, he asked a very profound question. And from a very dark place, he's been sitting in jail and he sent a message out asking Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we wait for someone else? I want to I wanna highlight a theme for my, my share this morning. Is that you have been called by God to be in this office 
We have been called for a purpose and for a reason. Now, I've lost a lot of loved ones, and I'm, I'm assuming all of us have. But we have been privileged to still stand and sit here together today. Because God has preserved you to be here for this special moment, for such a time as this. You have been given a purpose and a reason and a calling to still be alive today. We could have been one of those loved ones. Or God could have, you know, preserved us and gave birth to us some other years down the track. Or maybe in the issue. But the fact is that we are still here. We are alive today and you are sitting here, I'm standing here only because God has an ordained purpose for us to be here. What for you is to be the voice of our community, it is to, to build our community. You are the leaders of our community. I'm in a leadership position within the church community. And that's my call. That's my purpose. And that's why I'm here. And that's why God has gave birth to me to this time and not some hundred years later or hundred years past. And John asked the question, because John had a calling. And in the Bible, John the Baptist, his calling was to prepare the way for the Messiah. That was his calling. And when he was sitting in jail, he, he seemed to be uh, losing all his hopes. And Like, I'm not too sure if this is my purpose, being in jail. I'm not too sure if this is part of my calling. This was what's happening in John the Baptist's mind. And so he just wanted to make sure that the man he baptized earlier, his name was Jesus, that this is the actual Messiah that he was called to prepare the way for. And so when he sends that message up, this is what Jesus answered. Jesus told him, go back to John and tell him. Now the question is a very simple answer. Jesus could have answered and said, yes, I am the Messiah. I am the one that you have been waiting for. Or I am the one you, you have been called to prepare the way for. That, was, that would be a simple answer. But again, they just like to uh, complicate things. Eh? <laughs> Jesus told him, go back to John and tell him what you have heard and seen. Tell John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the deaf hears, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is preached to all. That was the answer. And that's exactly the answer that John was hoping to hear as well. Because John knew that the Messiah would do all these things. How do you back up? You know, um, when I see uh, a driver around Mackay uh, during the uh, pre-election, you know, you see all these uh, banners and <laughs> boards and everything. And there's a lot of uh, promises that you see in every, uh, you know, uh, campaign. And I guess when we come to the end of your um, term, you're going to look back and you're going to ask yourself the question, have we achieved that? Have we actually achieved all of these things that we've been promising to our community? And that's a question that you will have to struggle with. Because that's why we have a God calling purpose. That's why you have a reason to be here. That's your call to fulfill your commitment, not just to our community, but God actually put you here. You might not believe that, but I believe that. That this is God ordained office for you uh, to leave out your God-given purpose and calling in life, especially here for our community in Macau. And so I pray that when you come to the end of this term, 
you come a little back and you come ask the question, have we actually fulfilled this? And you'll be able to say, yes, the lame walk, the lepers are healed, the blind have seen, and the good news has reached Makai. This year, uh, you know, throughout your turn. And so I wish you all God's blessings. And I pray that not only you will live out your purpose, but may your um, duties, may your calling uh, be a God-fulfilled uh, turn <coughs> as you are ahead of us. All right, let's pray. Father, I praise you, Lord, for uh, the appointment of our team here at Makai Safe Castle. And I pray, Lord, that you have ordained them these positions and you have preserved them to be here for such a time as this. They are now our leaders. They are now our voices. But we pray, Father, that they may be able to realize that you have the ultimate authority and we may follow your lead. And I pray that their uh, decisions make in this room shall be appointed by you. As they move forward, the direction shall be directed by you. Whatever ways, Lord, that will help to bring up and grow <coughs> our community here in Makai. I pray for your blessings upon all of our leaders in here, and our counselors, and our directors here, and our full, our whole team here at the City Council. I pray that you will bless them, Lord, throughout this term. Keep them safe in your arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pat. Thank you. <coughs> well, Council, this is a uh, statutory meeting. We were required to have this meeting by law, and they're required to do some uh, statutory resolutions. So there's nobody uh, absent today. Our correspondence and office officers report uh, are in 3.1, which is the post election requirements. 3.1.1 is the election of the Deputy Mayor. The, uh, the Local Government Act of 2009 requires uh, Council to appoint a Deputy Mayor from its councillors by resolution at the statutory meeting. I have one written nomination from Councillor Hassan. Are there other nominations? Councillor Bella. So I'll, I'll offer uh, the councillors a uh, chance to address the council. Let's have a three minute address. We'll do that alphabetically. Councillor Bella. This is probably the first time and Probably the last you'll see me read a written statement. Um, but I've done it simply because I feel that it's very important. The election for the deputy's position is being held in this forum in the interest of transparency and the true democratic ideal. All of the worst things about politics that are at any, le at any level stem from back backroom deals done. For this reason, I've undertaken no lobbying, done no deals, made no promises. This was a conscious decision. I'm aware of the possible negative consequences. However, I believe that I overdid those aforementioned ideals. In essence, this is not about me. I put myself forward as I believe I have the necessary attributes to do the job and do it well. If promises of support have been made prior to this, I'm wasting my time. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, if you truly value the foundations of our system, you will reconsider based on what I say. Firstly, I believe there is absolutely no place in council for party politics. Thus, I state I am not a member of or affiliated in any way with any political party. I will not be reporting to party branches on the activities of council. Secondly, I have no other ambition or goal other than seeing this council operate to its utmost potential, thus allowing our residents the same. When I ran in this election, and was elected by our people. I committed to serve the full term, doing my utmost in this capacity to do right by our residents. I had and have no intention to use this merely as a stepping stone, <coughs> excuse me, merely as a stepping stone to higher office, thus placing my ambition over my promise to the people that put their faith in me to complete this term. I would, and the community should, expect this commitment from other candidates. <clears throat> I'm not here to be everyone's friend. We do, do not elect to use the services of a surgeon 
based on how well we like them, but rather on their competence. Their ability to perform surgical excellence is not based on how much they like us, but rather their ability and commitment to excellence. Objectivity and excellence will always trump subjectivity and mediocrity. This is my approach in all situations. However, if friendship does develop through respect earned by action, I'm open to it and would value it. I will give frank, honest comment and advice to those that seek it. I will never be silent about a wrong doing or a poor process for reasons of political experience or fear of personal consequences. Over the very short time we've had around this table, I feel that I've shown the ability and willingness to make positive and valuable contribution to discussion. My intellect, experience, knowledge and understanding allow this. I believe I have a better grasp than most of, fin of both finances and financial matters, which are the cornerstone of any and every function of this council. I do not sit passively, contributing little, as this is not, in my eyes, either productive nor responsible approach for anyone who purports to be a leader in our community. The role is not about, about being the one most able to buddy up to the Mayor, but rather someone who is professionally objective and has the courage and proven ability to speak out when it's needed, even if it is to personal detriment. I have proven I'm capable of this many times. <coughs> We also see this role as being one of advocacy for the council of body to the mayor's office. This may mean having some very uncomfortable conversations. It most certainly does not mean cosseting myself away in a separate office from other councillors. Whether I'm elected this role or not, I will be in the same corner of the councillor's rooms available should you need. This election, when all things are considered, is about you and the residents of this region, not about me. The question you need to ask yourself is about the level of, the com of your commitment to openness and the level of the candidate's commitment to actually fulfil their promise made to the community. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Miller. <coughs> Councillor Hassan. Thank you. <coughs> Councillors, I'm seeking your support today for my nomination to become the next Deputy Mayor of Mackay Regional Council. As a second term councillor, I believe that I have the knowledge, the skills and the experience to fulfil this position and will provide balance, calm and equity. I know all of you around the table, some of course better than others, and I'll strive to build, further build upon these relationships to make sure that this is a cohesive and collaborative council. While securing the highest, highest number of votes certainly doesn't imply any entitlement to this position, I do feel that the consistent support that I received across our entire region demonstrates my commitment to this community. I'm deeply grateful for the trust and confidence that has been placed in me by my colleagues and fellow citizens. I worked extremely hard over the past four years to ensure that I served my whole community and yet endeavoured to make all of our residents feel heard. I'm committed to serving this community with integrity, dedication and a genuine desire to make a positive impact on the lives of our residents and our council. Having been elected to council previously, both as part of a team and as an independent, I can see both perspectives and I'll work with everyone here to develop a sense of fairness and goodwill. While I don't expect that we'll all see eye to eye or agree on everything, that's not democracy, I do anticipate that we'll all respect the fact that our constituents have elected all of us to sit around this table to represent them. We don't all have to be friends outside of this building, but I do believe that we need to abide by our code of conduct and conduct ourselves in a professional manner. As Deputy Mayor, I'll work tirelessly to support the Mayor and all of our Council to address the pressing issues that are facing our community. I'll strive to foster collaboration and cooperation among all stakeholders to ensure that our Council is transparent, accountable and responsive to the needs of our citizens. I'm passionate about this region and our future and I'm dedicated to working with all of you to build a stronger, more vibrant and more inclusive place for all of us to call home. So I humbly ask for your support and your vote today. Together we can make a difference and create a better future for our community. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Hassan. The Act requires us to uh, elect a Deputy Mayor by resolution. Somebody like Councillor Jones, would you like to move? Um, yes, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, I'd, sorry, I'd like to move that um, I, I would like to see um, Councillor Hassan be put forward for the role. You, you want to move that Councillor Hassan be the Deputy Mayor? Yes. Is there a seconder? Second. Councillor Christensen seconds it. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor? No, thank you. So are there speakers? Are there speakers? I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Those against? Um, so there's uh, 
Can I put that again so that I can see everybody voting? Those in favour of the motion? Okay, those against? There's two against, Councillor Miller and Councillor Sheedy against. So the motion is carried 9-2. Congratulations, Councillor Hassan. Deputy Mayor, well done. Very good. Uh, meeting arrangements, 3.1.2. A fairly simple uh, resolution <coughs> put forward today as part of the statutory meeting. Are there questions about this? So, the resolution must be that the first ordinary meeting of the Mackay Regional Council post the 2024 elections be held on Wednesday, the 24th of April, and following the 24th of April meeting, commencing from May, that the Council's ordinary meetings be held on the fourth Wednesday of every month, commencing at 10 a.m. be held in the Mackay Regional Council chambers in the Sorella Dabba building at 73 Gordon Street and open to the public. And also that they re required public notice of meeting arrangements be undertaken. Somebody like to move? Councillor May moves, seconded by Councillor Jones. Councillor May? No, okay. No speak. Are there no speakers? I was just gonna say, Your Worship, that the officer's recommendation um, is certainly an efficient way to be able to operate council on a four weekly cycle, cycle and I'm certainly happy to endorse the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Jones, it's speaking for, is there a speaker against? Are there any other speakers? Other speakers, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, reimbursement of expenses and provision of facilities for councillors at 3.1.3. The officer's recommendation adopted the uh, Macquarie Regional Council reimbursement of expenses and provision of facilities for councillors policy, which is policy number 002. Are there any questions? No questions. Would somebody like to move in the adoption of 3.1.3? Somebody, Councillor Hassan, thank you. Second by Councillor Jones. Councillor Hassan, are any speakers? I'll put that motion. Those in favour? <coughs> any against? Motion's carried in it. Can I put that again to see that everybody voted? Those in favour? Any against? That's fine, thank you. The motion's carried unanimously, thank you. Now, 3.1.4 superannuation for councillors. Um, are there questions about this agenda item? Any questions? The officer's recommendation is that under the Local Government Act, Council contribute uh, up to a maximum of 12% superannuation contribution to the superannuation funds or schemes complying with the Commonwealth uh, for elected members who wish to participate. If there's no questions, would somebody like to move? Councillor May move, seconded by Councillor Hassan. Councillor May, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. 3.1.5, the standing orders, that is the, uh, the meetings of council. Uh, Councillor Bella has notified that uh, he wishes to move an amendment, and the amendment is that council adopt the standing orders as amended to remove the suggested inclusion of questions on notice from clause 1.2.1c, also from the order of business listing. We'll deal with the amendment first. Councillor Bella, you so move. Is there a second? Councillor Jones seconds. Councillor Bell. <coughs> On the whole, the uh, standing orders are, are um, very well put and quite workable. The reason I've moved the amendment to this motion is that I believe it is merely a duplication of what already exists to us, a facility which <coughs> I've, had, I've availed myself uh, to for over eight years. Um, the councillor has every right to approach the CEO with any question at any point. Um, this, depending on the reply, if it is available for public knowledge, they can disseminate that information in any way, shape or form they see fit. If it is, however, confidential, of course, it must remain confidential. Um, this, is, this can be done at any time throughout the meeting cycle. It doesn't mean you ask a question, you have to wait a month or whatever, for it appear, to appear in the, um, the standing orders. Now, in the um, meeting agenda, if you find that your response to the questions you have asked is important enough that it needs to be brought to public attention, a crafted notified motion is more than adequate, and it's what I've done on many occasions, uh, to, for the, that item to be brought to public attention. So the reason for me moving the amendment is I believe that it is merely another layer of something we already have, and thus I think um, it was unnecessary. Thanks, Councillor Bell. Speaker against. Councillor Christensen. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, 
I speak against the amendment and ultimately for the original motion that's uh, before us in the agenda, uh, which is the standing orders meetings 2024 in toto. Um, <clears throat> the reality of uh, what uh, Councillor Bell is talking about, it's a uh, proposal that I put forward that we have questions on notice that have uh, basically the same procedure as a notified motion. Um, we heard from the pastor earlier today about profound questions. I mean, it's one of our jobs to ask profound questions uh, of, of the administration, of the running of council, and we do that on behalf of the entire Mackay region. Um, yes, uh, it may be, as uh, Councillor Bella says, a duplication, but actually a lot of what we do in these meetings is duplication of processes <coughs> that can happen informally. Uh, we already have, within the standing orders, the ability to ask questions on any matter that is before council. Uh, those things can be done outside of these chambers but it doesn't lend itself to accountability and transparency. Uh, I would hope that a question of notice would probably be only used for the most uh, uh, gravest of things. Uh, if there was something that come up that a councillor felt uh, needed uh, to be aired publicly that was very important for whatever reason, it gives them the ability to ask that question. I don't think that's a big thing. I think that that's actually what we're here to do, to ask questions on behalf of the community and to bring motions before uh, this council. So that change in the standing orders from last term um, actually enhances our ability. Uh, and so I would recommend that we defeat the amendment and pass the original motion. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Christensen. Uh, the speaker for? Are there any other speakers? Other speakers? Uh, councillors, I, I support the amended motion that uh, Councillor Bella has put up. I hear what Councillor Christensen is saying, but we have an ample opportunity uh, already ensconced in, in the uh, standing orders to actually bring questions forward at any stage. And I fear that the, um, the compartmentalising of questions on notice might actually be a detriment. Councillor Ballard, do you uh, wish to reply? There's just a couple of points uh, stemming from uh, comments by Councillor Christensen. As he said, there are duplications already in our system. Why not use them? Um, I think we should be streamlining rather than, um, than adding those extra layers. The other thing that bringing a question that you've asked and then you've got the response, bringing it forward in the, sh in the case of a notified motion allows debate about the issue. It allows different perspectives to be presented, whereas to merely see it as a report in our agenda is very unidimensional. And I'm actually surprised that um, something that people that have any knowledge with regard to politics and debate would actually not want to grasp the opportunity to undertake that debate. I just think that the system we have actually provides more currently with less bureaucracy, I suppose. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bella. So, councillors. We will take a motion on <coughs> the amendment if the motion is upheld and the motion, the amendment becomes the motion. If it's defeated, we'll go back to the original uh, motion which is put before you in your agenda. So the motion, uh, sorry, the amendment is that council adopt the standing orders with the annexed model meeting procedures as amended to remove the suggested inclusion of questions on notice from clause 2.1, uh, sorry, 1.2.1c and also from the order of business listing. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? So the amendment is carried uh, with four registered against. And uh, so now that the motion, that, sorry, the uh, agenda item that you have before you, 3.1.5, is amended uh, as per the amendment that uh, we've just passed. Would somebody like to, well, sorry, are there questions on uh, on the standing orders? No questions on the standing orders. Would somebody like to move? Councillor Jones moves. Is there a second for the standing orders? Councillor Sheedy seconds. Councillor Jones. Oh, Your Worship, I think as you said previously that the um, standing orders and, and these items on our agenda today are just um, something that uh, we need to do legislatively, so um, I'm happy for us to move forward in this stance. Thank you. Can the speaker against? Are there any other speakers? I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried unanimously.
All right. Well, that's it, councillors. Thank you very much. We made it through our first statutory meeting of this council for uh, this, this term. <coughs> Thank you very much for your attendance. I declare the meeting closed. <laughs>